Hey everybody, welcome back to Doc G's Reloading. As I promised, here is the Hellion all set up the way I wanted to get it set up. And uh, you can see I put a special muzzle brake on here. This is the Sig Sauer Quick Adapter. So my Sig Sauer 7.62 uh, suppressor will go on there. And what's nice about up here in the front is you've got a little push-in knob, this push-in knob right here. I'll move my finger away. You can see this push. You push that in, and on the top it says either N or S. So N for normal, S for suppressed, has two settings. So if I'm at the range and I'm shooting without the suppressor, I leave it on N. The minute I pop the suppressor on, I push this in and turn it to S for suppressed. Um, I'll have to check that feature out. Um, also, I put a, you can see here, I put the Surefire tape switch here, and, a, and it's got the full off on uh, here, and it goes underneath, nice and tight, underneath the rifle, comes out the other side, and then here's where I've got the Surefire, and then it actually has a switch back here too, it has a button back here that I kept on the top, so my 1000 lumen uh, light from Surefire. And you can see that's mounted by the M locks. So it goes right into the M lock. Uh, you can't really see it here, but underneath it's, it's in one of the M lock uh, slots. And, uh, and then I put uh, the Vortex scope on. So here's that Vortex scope I was telling you about. And you can see here, I, I put the, so a quick release mount. So I can just, this is the Bob row mount. So I push in on that little paddle and then I lift up here and then the whole thing just comes right off and then I can shoot with the iron sights there if I want to so I'll pull up those iron sights shoot there um, so the what I like about it is now I, I could install a you know 45 degree angled red dot for up close if I needed to I, I'm not gonna be using this for competition so um but it's nice in that and then i've got the sunshade screwed on here we'll just unscrew the sunshade i think the sunshade looks cool on it but anyway that's without the sunshade and this is the 2 to 10 vortex that i covered in the previous uh video that i have and uh really impressed with the vortex uh, another couple things about it is that it has a on the uh illumination it goes four and then slash and then five and then slash and then six and then slash. And what it is, is the slash is the off position. So you could put it on your five illumination and let's say you always like the five. Well, all you have to do is go one click to get to that illumination level. So that's kind of a neat feature. Instead of having to scroll, go all the way around to five again and go all the way back to zero again, all you have to do is do one click which moves you into the off range. So it's like four off, five off, six off, seven off, eight off. So whatever, you know, wherever you have, if you have it on the slash mark, it's off. If you have it on the number, it's on that illumination level. So I already bore sighted this. Uh, I just need to get it out to the range and actually uh, check it out. I'm gonna leave this off for a minute just cause it's easier to handle the rifle. <clears throat> but this is all aluminum up here. So this is all, you can see the heavy duty screws here. You know, screws here, screws here, two and two, that hold this whole Picatinny rail on, whole Picatinny rail system on, really nice. Um, it also came with this, uh, uh, you know, like Magpul, of course now I can't get the thing out, but it's a, uh, there you go. So you can pop that open and I'm gonna put a couple batteries in there. I'm gonna put two of the one, two, three batteries, which are for my flashlight. So I'm gonna put a couple batteries in there with a little foam so they don't rattle around. And uh, kind of a nice feature, again, right out of the box, you know, that's what you're getting. Uh, so I'm not gonna change this grip at all. It's got a really nice texture to it, I really like it. Uh, it looks like one of the more expensive grips. Um, I don't know what brand it is, but it's really nice. Uh, like I said, I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, you got your ambidextrous safety. Now, I use both, so both of these mags work. So here's the, here's the uh, plastic mag it came with. You know, your, your Magpul, really good stuff. You know, 
Snaps right in there easy, no problems. Pop the button, out it comes. Here's my old school 40 round beaten to heck metal ones from the military surplus store that I have. I think even this is, yeah. Maybe gotta tap that back a little bit. <laughs> it's, uh, but anyway, you know, this thing here, 40 round, 40 rounder. And of course, now it's gonna make a liar out of me. Oh, because hang on, it's got, I got too much ammo in there. And I realize that this is live ammo and I should not be doing this, but I'm just putting the magazine in. I'm not gonna cycle it. So there you go, fits right in perfectly. So um, I just had it maxed out, so I'd have to really push hard against the spring to get it in there anyway. But no, fits perfectly, cycles perfectly. I put some blanks in there, cycled some blanks through, you know, the snap caps. And uh, this works perfectly. So you got 30 round, 40 round, I haven't tried a 50 round drum or any of that stuff because I mean, I'm not gonna be messing with that. So uh, ever, and that would add a lot of weight to it. And you'd have this big drum down here. I don't know that you could get your arm around to it, but I mean, if you need more than 30 or 40 rounds, uh, that's, yeah, you're in trouble. So anyway, you just reload like any other rifle. And actually I was playing with it last night and just trying to do some speed reloads. And you know, with this up here like this, bang, 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 I would come up and I would hit the button and the magazine would just kind of drop in my hand a little bit. I would just drop it out on the ground, grab another one, snap it right in, and I was off and running again. So that's really nice. This is a spring-loaded, here's your spring-loaded, uh, spring-loaded um, charging handle. Ambidextrous, goes to either side. That's really nice. Um, Again, lightweight. I was surprised at how light this is. I, I couldn't get over how light this was right out of the box. Now with everything on it, you know, I added some weight with the flashlight and with the scope for sure. I mean, the scope's not light, so it's definitely adding at least a pound. Um, and this thing all takes down with one, two, three. You have three, three pins here that you have to take to take the whole thing down. There, you don't need any tools with this at all, which is really nice. And yesterday, to get this off, so to get the flash hider off that I had here, you can't put this in a vise. There's no way to put this in a vise. So I actually had to use my special tool here. I had to use this uh, AR-15 tool here. So this part mounts in the vise. This part here mounts into the barrel uh, splining. And what I had to do is I had to mount this in. I took off the buttstock the way they tell you in the instructions. I slid this in, this locked into place. I locked this in my vise, and then I just took the flash hider off, put this one on, and I was done, ready to go. So an invaluable tool. You have to have this tool or there's no way you're gonna get that flash hider off. Um, I even he preheated it. I heated it up with a uh, Milwaukee heat gun uh, to about six, 600 degrees or so, uh, and then I think that helped for sure. But without that tool, I would not have been able to engage the barrel um, to uh, hold it. Uh, like you have to, to get flash hiders off or whatever off. Um, yeah, that's new from Six Hour. And uh, you know, the cheek weld is nice. And I love the fact that, again, the, the features on this gun that you will not find on any other, any other bullpup of any kind is that this has the adjustable stock five position adjustable stock and it's spring loaded so it's easy to move in and out and this is your AR-15 handle so you can get any AR-15 grip that you like and you can put it on there. So now what I need to do is I need to get this out to the range and I need to try to see what the zero is going to be at 100 yards which I'm going to do probably this week get it out there and uh, be good if I mounted this the right direction. Um, need to get this out to the range and zero the scope for 100 yards. And I've already, like I said, I've already bore sighted it, so it's gotten me at least ahead of the game. Um, but uh, and I'm going to shoot it suppressed and unsuppressed. And then I'll do another video on uh, on how it shot. Uh, everybody that I've watched really likes how it shoots, and I don't see. Okay, so the trigger is a two stage trigger. Uh, let's see here. I'll I'll uh, get it. I'll get it up and get it racked and ready here. So all right. So your trigger is a two stage trigger. So you got a little bit of slack to take up. 
Okay, so we're gonna go here. So you got a little slack to take up, right to there, boom. Okay, there's your, there's your, that first stage to second stage. Here's your second stage, it engages, I can feel it. Now as you pull, little creep, little creep, little creep, bang. Okay, so, but not bad at all. And you're never, you're gonna go, you're gonna go like this. You're gonna make one smooth trigger pull when you're pulling. So, yeah, when I do that, yeah, you can see the inadequacy of the trigger. But what I was practicing dry firing with the snap caps in there, and I'm actually just pulling the trigger, you didn't notice any of that. And I'm sure this trigger is gonna break in some too. So, for a bullpup trigger, this is fantastic. I'm surprised um, how good this trigger is, being that it's a bullpup. I mean, the, you think about it, they gotta connect linkage from here all the way back to here. I'm sorry, all the way back to here to get this to work. So uh, instead of having everything right here, and again, you don't need a match grade trigger on this. You're not, you're not gonna be shooting out to you know 600,000 yards accurately. I mean, you notice I don't even have, so you have M lock, M lock, M lock, three here, three here, and three here. So you have nine M lock slots. I don't even, I'm not even putting a Picatinny rail up here for a bipod. Why would I put a bipod up here? This is not a bipod rifle. Um, and and the, and your magazine's gonna get in your way anyway if you're in the prone position, especially if you're using a longer one, it's gonna get in your way if you're laying down. This is not a lay down, shoot long distance rifle. This is a CQB and I can reach out to 600 yards if I needed to from a stable shooting platform because of the full length barrel. But that's it really. So, I mean, I'm not complaining about the trigger at all. There's nothing about this gun that I don't like. I like everything about it. This is this is one of the coolest purchases I've ever made. Um, now in the future, I'm gonna make some videos on single stage reloading. Since I am an expert at that, I would, I would call myself an expert at that. I'm comfortable calling myself an expert at single stage reloading. Um, I did reach the master level in F-class, uh, FTR, F-class rifle shooting, uh, reloading the way that I did reload, which gave me extreme accuracy at 1,000 yards with a 308. So I am gonna do videos on uh, single stage reloading. I'm also gonna do some videos on some of the guns I have. Um, I'm gonna do my video on a 416 Barrett uh, that I have, which is an awesome cartridge. The 416 Barrett cartridge is the one they use to shoot out to two miles when they do the king of the two mile competition. That, that cartridge almost always wins, uh, you know, first and second and third place. Because uh, it's such a great long-range cartridge. I'm also going to talk about my 50 BMG, the 82A1. Uh, so uh, that'll uh, give me some other uh, videos in here too. Just the, some of the guns I have and also uh, some single-stage reloading stuff. And if you guys have any requests too, let me know. And I'll be more than happy to do them for you. If I've you know got the ability to do them, I will do them for you. But this is the final kind of review on everything I did to set up my the way I want it. Um, my uh, Springfield Hellion in 5.56, and uh, I'm gonna get it out to the range, and I'll do a range report after I get that done, probably a week or two, and I'll have the range report done for you. All right, thanks again for watching Doc G's Reloading.